okay welcome to uh, linear integrated circuits videos so we are looking to the digital to analog converters so this is uh, part 2 so in the previous video we have seen a 3 bit DAC which is having a uh, 3 inputs b1 b2 b3 and uh, these are the uh, 8 different possible combinations of the input starting from 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 the output voltage changes from 0 to 7 by 8 of the uh, reference and uh, every consecutive input voltage change is going to have an output change of 1 LSD. Uh, since there are only 2 power n possible input codes, the transfer characteristics of uh, DAC is said to have points whose envelope is a straight line, meaning uh, we had uh, these 8 points, so these are the uh, points corresponding to the output voltage if you draw the envelope of this so this this is the envelope joining all the output points which happens to be a straight line so that's what is the meaning of uh, uh, this envelope is a straight line with end points of so and so uh, the characteristics of the DAC with n is equal to 3 and v fsr is equal to 1 volt so here uh, in, in this previous example we have taken VFSR is equal to 1 volt that is VCC is equal to 1 volt so that's why it is 1 volt divided by 8, 2 volt divided by 8 so the maximum voltage you can get is 7 by 8 volts which is less than 1 volt and uh, bars ranging in height from 0 to VFS that is full scale swing that is from 0 volt to 7 by 8 volt with a resolution of 1 LSD which is 1 over 8 volts so 1 over 8 is nothing but 1 over 2 power 3 so we know that uh, lsb is nothing but vfsr multiplied by 2 power minus n so 2 power minus in, minus n is actually 2 power minus uh, 3 which is 1 over 8 and uh, vfsr is in this particular case it is 1 volt let us uh, see something more about uh, that if we drive a DAC with a uniformly clocked n bit binary counter and if you observe a V0 so on the oscilloscope you will actually get a state case because we know that a binary counter is 1 which changes from uh, 0 0 0 to 1 1 1 starting from 0 0 0 then it is binary sorry uh, LS will increase by 1 next it is next bit will going to make it 1 so the binary counter output is applied as the input for your DAC the output total will keep on changing uh, gradually by one LSB. It looks like a staircase. Higher the value of n, finer the resolution. So that's what we saw in one of the exam, one of the table. So if the value of uh, n is more and more, the resolution is better and better. So that uh, staircase looks like a ramp signal. And uh, DACs are available in word lengths ranging from six bits to twenty bits or more while uh, DAC is within with 6 bit, 8 bit, 10, 12, 14 bits are commonly used and they are economical whereas DAC is with n greater than 14 will become uh, complex and the cost is more for uh, number of bits more than 14. So a 20 bit uh, DAX will be used for a specific application where the resolution is very important. Now we shall see some uh, DAC specifications here. The internal circuitry of a DAC is subject to component mismatches, drift, aging, noise and other sources of error whose effect is, is to degrade the conversion performance. Now there are so many mismatches uh, possible in a IC because of uh, drift in the values of uh, different components because of the aging because of noise interference there can be a possible degradation of the conversion performance the maximum deviation of the actual output from the ideal value is predicted and is called absolute accuracy and is expressed in fractions of one lsd now we expect certain output voltage from a DAC if the output voltage doesn't match with the uh, expected value we call there is a error so this error we call it as absolute accuracy. Now this is actually expressed in terms of by how much it is deviating in terms of fraction of LSP. Uh, 
the absolute accuracy must never be worse than half LSP. So we know that one LSP is actually uh, V FSR divided by 2 power N. Uh, the absolute accuracy must never be uh, worse than half LSP. The variation in the output voltage and the expected voltage should not be away from half LSP. If the variation is too much, then we can say uh, the, uh, the DAC performance is very bad. Now this is what we are uh, trying to look into. So DAC errors are classified into two errors that is one is static and other is the dynamic error. The simplest static errors are offset and offset error and the gain error. Now let us see uh, one of the example of a, a DAC with a 3 bits operation. I can see this uh, uh, line which is there starting from 0 to uh, VFSP. So this is the ideal uh, expected value. But the output value, you can see the output values are not uh, close to the uh, expected value. At some point it is almost close to the expected value. At other points it is deviating. You can see when the input is 0, we have some output voltage. So even when the input voltage is 0, suppose if there is an output, we call this as offset error. Without input, if you are getting some output, we call that error in the DAC as an offset error, which is a, a static error. And uh, what we can do is we can actually make this uh, error coincide to 0. So we can somehow make this to 0. So if you make this 0, you can see there is an offset happening here also, initially itself. Uh, in the process of coinciding this to 0, so that's what is done here. So in the process of coinciding this to 0 to uh, nullify the offset error, so there is a too much of variation in the expected output and the actual output. This we call it as gain error. So one error we define it as offset error with the input voltage as 0. What is the output voltage? So the difference between the output voltage, actual output voltage and the expected is the offset error when the input is 0. When the input is maximum, upon nullifying the offset error, we still have an error over here. So this error is called as gain error. Now, in the previous example, you can see there is an offset error of 1 LSP. Because we know that this is uh, 0, this is 1 by 8, this is 2 by 8, 3 by 8, 4 by 8, 5 by 8. 6 by 8 and 7 by 8. So from this to this it is 1 LSB. Meaning the offset error here is 1 LSB. So that's what is mentioned here. The offset error 1 LSB in this example is nulled by translating the actual envelope up or down until it goes through the origin. Now actually what we are trying to do is we are actually trying to push this down so that this offset error becomes 0. So there is an offset error of 1 LSB it has been reduced to 0 now. Then because of this uh, moving this to 0, so the gain error has become minus 2 LSB. You can see in the previous case the offset error was plus LSB. So why plus plus LSB means because the expected output is 0, we are actually getting more than that. So that's why it is plus LSB. It is above by 1 LSB. Upon nullifying this, we have this graph. So as you can see now, there is no offset error. But you can see the expected voltage is this uh, for full scale, but we are getting the output voltage of uh, this much down. You can see the amount of uh, output voltage less is actually two times the LSB because this is one LSB, this is another LSB. So there is a gain error of minus two LSB. Why it is minus two means because there are it is the actual output is two LSB down from the expected value. So that's why then. There is a gain error of minus 2 LSB in this example, which can be nulled by adjusting the scale factor, which is k. So we can actually make this also a 0 by adjusting the scale factor, that is uh, the gain of the uh, circuit. So here we are defining two DAC errors. These two are static errors. One is offset error, other is uh, the gain error. So here you can see there is an offset error of 1 LSB, which is plus. So there was some gain error, which is minus 1 here. In order to make this uh, 0, we have actually pushed this down here. Now offset error has become 0, but there is a gain error of minus 2 LSP. So let us see a uh, few more uh, concepts of uh, DAC. So this is called as INL and DNL of 
at that. You can see even after both the errors are nulled. So it was told that you can nullify both offset error as well as the gain error. Even after nullifying both the errors, the actual envelope is likely to deviate from the straight line. So we expected a straight line uh, that is an actual uh, output of a DAG, but it will actually deviate from the straight line. The maximum deviation is called as integral non-linearity. So this INL stands for, I stands for integral, N stands for non, L stands for linearity. So this NL stands for non-linearity. Also, uh, the relative accuracy and is expressed in fractions of one LSP. So we talk about the integral non-linearity which is also called as a relative accuracy and is expressed in fractions of one LSP. As we saw in the case of uh, offset error and gain error, so those errors are also expressed as fractions of uh, LSP. In the previous case it was uh, 1 LSP and minus 2 LSP. It is also possible to have half LSB and uh, minus 1.5 LSB so on so. Now here also the integral nonlinearity will also be expressed in terms of fractions of LSB. Ideally the difference in height between the adjacent bars is 1 LSB. So as we saw in the previous case here you can see. So here we have seen that uh, from uh, 1 bit to other bit. So it, it changes by. So this is what you can see. So from one bit to other bit, the change is one LSP. So that's what we are trying to look at here. So we are looking at here. So ideally the difference in the height between the adjacent bars is one LSP. The maximum deviation from this ideal value is called as the differential nonlinear. So we know that if the input changes by 1 LSB, output is bound to change by 1 LSB. Suppose if the input changes from 0, 0, 001 to 0, 010. 0. So how much is the amount of change in the input voltage? It is changed by 1 LSB. The output also changed by 1 LSB. If the output variation is just 1 LSB from the previous value, we say that there is no error in case of differential nonlinearity. If the maximum deviation varies from this 1 LSB, maximum deviation from this ideal value, we want to have an ideal difference of 1 LSB. If that variation exceeds this 1 LSB, then we say there is a differential nonlinear. So this we'll uh, try to understand using an example here. Now let me just have a look at this example. Now we can see this is at 0 and here we have uh, the output as 1 by 8. Can just have a look at uh, what is the level of this one. This is at zero. Uh, there is a. This is exactly coinciding with the uh, that ideal straight line. So INL at this zero zero is actually zero. What is DNL? DNL is also zero because uh, you are not having any deviation. Now take this zero zero one. In this zero zero one, since this dot is the actual output and this is exactly falling on the straight line, so there is no error in the output. There is no uh, difference in the actual and the expected output. So INL is 0, that is integral nonlinearity is 0. So as the input changes from 0, 0 to 0, 0, 1, the output has changed from 0 to 1 by 8. The change in the output voltage is 1 LSP. So that's why there is no DNL. Now just have a look at this 0, 1, 0. So this is 0, 1, 0. Now you can see this is the actual output. Actual output is uh, not exactly 2 by 8 uh, value. So it is slightly less than that. Now you can see uh, this is each one is half LSP. So this output is actually half LSP less than the uh, ideal value. So that's why when the input is 0, 1, 0, that is 0, 1, 0. So there is a INL of minus half. So this is in specified in terms of LSP. Now it is minus half LSP. Then Okay, we shall look at the DNL later in the next video. See this 0, 1, 1. In this 0, 1, 1, see here the expected output is this, but actual output is slightly more than that. Now, how much more? It is actually half LSB more. That's why it is plus half LSB. See this now. This is 1, 0, 0. The output is here, expected here. It's actually 1 LSB down. That's why it is minus 1. Likewise, this is changing.